You see the train waits at the block until the second train gets over to the read switch, then it triggers the block and that train at the block takes off. Now this train is slowing down and stopping at the block. It will wait till the second train comes around the loop, goes over the acceleration read switch, and triggers the block to start. Now let's talk about uh, two train operation, which is what we'll try to do next. With no change in configuration or programming to this system, basically uh, the train is sitting there now waiting for that button to be pushed before it'll move. Now think about if you replace this button with a second read switch over here connected to the acceleration terminals, instead of me pushing the button to release the train, a second train coming along with the magnet can cross over that read switch that we'll add and that'll release the train. So we'll do two train operation with no change in the system other than replacing this button with the second read switch. We've got the uh, same setup as we had a minute ago when we were doing automatic uh, station stop. Uh, using the bell, uh, the, using the push button to start the train up when we have one train operating. Now for two train control, it's basically the same setup except over here, instead of having the push button on the end of this wire, which is connected to the, ac the acceleration terminals, the uh, push button has been re replaced by a read switch. So instead of me pushing a push button to start the train up that's stopped on the block back here, uh, this second train will go over the read switch and activate the acceleration terminals of the station master which will start the train that's waiting on the block. So just to review our setup, we've got the station master here. Uh, we have a read switch right in front of the block connected to the deacceleration terminals of the station master. And we've got a read switch over here connected to the acceleration terminals of the station master. And initial conditions seem to matter here. Uh, I need to have that second train positioned just downstream or somewhere downstream of the reed switch to start this thing up properly. If I start it in front of the reed switch, uh, the station master thinks it wants to just one, one train and it won't stop the train. So it seems like, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm deducing this from my experience here that I need to start the second train somewhere downstream, downstream of the reed switch. So let's start these up and we'll take a look at it. See the train waits at the block until the second train gets over to the read switch, then it triggers the block and that train at the block takes off. Now this train is slowing down and stopping at the block. It will wait till the second train comes around the loop, goes over the acceleration read switch, and triggers the block to start. Notice if I, if I hold this train back, I've got my finger in front of this diesel so it can't get past me. Notice that train's waiting at the station. This is basically the principle for uh, controlling two trains on the same track. You hold the faster one back. If this was the faster engine trying to catch that engine, and let's say if that was the faster engine trying to catch this engine, that engine's got to wait till the slower engine gets around to the block. So this thing keeps the spacing constant.
I've reduced the uh, lights a little bit so maybe you can see the lights here better. Notice that's green as that train comes into the block. When it triggers a deacceleration center, it goes to flashing red, meaning it's deaccelerating. Now it's waiting. Now there, the second train went over the acceleration center over there. Notice it's blinking green. Blinking green meaning accelerating. Now it's solid green, waiting for the train to come in the block. Flashing red for deacceleration. Stop and pause. There it goes back to blinking green as soon as that train goes over the acceleration center. And again, the, the, red, the red LED that's on, uh, on your right as you're viewing this, that just triggers just when an LED you know, read switch is activated. Notice one more thing. If I want to change this back to one train operation, without changing the system, I'm just going to remove this train as it comes around here. I remove the uh, second train, so now when the first train comes around, I think it will trigger this to an orange color. Yeah, you can see the, you may be able to see the, on your left, the status LED went to orange. So instead of stopping that train, which you might expect it to do, it goes on through. So if you want to, if you're running two trains and you want to change to running just one train, you basically lift the, the one train off the track and it'll continue running the remaining train that's left. You lift the train off at the wrong spot since it's a, uh, such that the single remaining train gets caught at the block and it's waiting there. You can just use a magnet. To, I've got a magnet in my hand. You can just use a magnet to manually trigger this thing and it'll put it back into operation. Operation on the same configuration as before, but now instead of using the uh, S helper service diesels, I've got two stock American Flyer uh, engines on the track. These are with the stock American Flyer motors. These were actually meant to run on uh, AC when they were sold back in the 1950s, but since they got what you call universal motors in them, they're happy to run on DC. The only problem is they take a lot more amperage, whereas the S helper diesels probably take about a half an amp to run or even less. I think these American Flyer engines can pull up, to, pull up to two or three amps of current per each engine, so I did have to swap out for a larger amperage transformer. But when you consider these engines were built back in the 1950s and built on a budget for a, a family to buy at a toy store for their children, and they're uh, still running today 50 years later, that's still pretty impressive. Uh, the, the loop, again, the, the loop really needs to be longer than it is. The, this loop is really almost too short for uh, American Flyer engines with the stock motors. I, I, before I turned the camera on, I've been sitting here fiddling for about an hour trying to get them to run without running in, into each other because uh, you can't run them quite as slow as the S-Helper service diesels run and you, and you have to run them a little bit faster and they take a little bit longer to start up. But we'll try to demonstrate that now, how that works. Here we've got the uh, here we've got the two flyer engines running, and this just barely works. I had a wreck uh, a minute ago. I had to stop the camera and clean the wreck up and restart them. But this is very precarious. If this was a longer loop, it would probably work much better. You'll probably need a, a loop about at least twice as long as this to have it really work reliably. This shows it can be done with American flyer engines on this short loop. It, it, it just barely. It's just barely operation. You can 
receiving uh, the short train of the Atlantic and then it pulls out pretty well before this uh, Pacific comes in. But I had to move the track contact back because the Pacific just barely gets out of the block section when the Atlantic is pulling in. I might mention if we had a set of American Flyer steam engines like this that had the uh, replacement cam motors, you could get cam motors from SNS trains or similar vendors. So you can put a, a DC cam motor in and replace the old 1950s universal motor. It takes less amps and it runs more smoothly. They probably work a lot better here, but unfortunately I don't have any that will uh, run on DC. All I have is these two uh, stock engines to use.